I think Iraq was like our Vietnam. There was a point where we started coming on broken, and then we started coming on, you know, draped in, in flags. Tony Blair robbed me of my son's life and of my life. And if it had been for a, a good enough reason, maybe then we could all accept it a bit better. But there was no reason there, really. Just to put some bloke out of power that they didn't like. Thirty-four-year-old Staff Sergeant Sharon Elliott joined the army straight after leaving school. She'd served in Kosovo and Northern Ireland and was brave and fearless, says her mother. Getting the call to go to Iraq in 2006, though, was different. I said to her, um, are you afraid? And it's the first time she's ever said yes. That she was, she was... <coughs> Sorry. She was frightened to go. And as her mum, that must have been very tough. Well, I've never heard her say that before. It's as if she knew. Sharon Elliott only had that first week in Iraq. She was killed just seven days after arriving. She was on a boat patrol in the Shat al Arab waterway in Basra when it was hit by a bomb. It was Remembrance Sunday. For the first six years, I had a recurring dream. I was in a boat, but I couldn't get it out. She was just stuck. It's not there as much now, but it still comes back. Because you're not there, you see. If your child falls, you're there to pick them up. But in our cases, we're not. Elsie says the report confirms what she always believed, that Tony Blair chose to invade Iraq before all other options were exhausted. In doing so, she says, he signed her daughter's death warrant. It was an illegal war Tony Blair took them into. They weren't equipped. They couldn't defend themselves. You don't send a plumber to do a job and not give them the tools to work, do you? The bullet went in my left cheek, came out my right cheek, um, obviously smashed both cheekbones, broke my jaw in four places. Simon Brown had just rescued six of his colleagues from a broken vehicle in Basra when he was hit by a sniper. It didn't cross your mind at that moment that you might die? No, no. I generally thought a couple of weeks in hospital chatting up nurses and that would be me. But, yeah, yeah, got that wrong. Simon lost his left eye and has only slight vision in his right. Over the next few years, he was to have 22 operations to rebuild his face. If it took a superhuman effort to stay alive that day, the effort to quell feelings of anger and bitterness about the war has perhaps been as great. We weren't ready for it. You know, we, we were, we spent the last 30, 40 years preparing for a war in Northern Europe. And then all of a sudden, we went to a desert. But so many people will be looking at you and not understanding why you are not more angry, more outraged by what happened to you, what happened to your friends. I hope people don't judge me, you know. Like, like I say, I've got to move on. I've got to move past it, you know. And me being angry is not going to change anything. It's not going to bring anyone back. It's not going to fix my eyesight. I've got to believe that they fought and died for something because it, it's too poisonous not to think that. And I, I can't, I can't let, I can't let myself believe that, that their, their lives were pointless. What would that do to you? Uh, it did break me. Uh, it took me straight back to that place I was in when I woke up in hospital. Michael was a typical mummy's boy, because where I was, Michael was. It's almost 10 years since Janice Proctor's son, Michael, died, and her anger has grown. He was just 18 when he was killed by a roadside bomb in a war she still believes was based on one man's lie. And this is what Tony Blair did to me. He ripped the carpet from under my feet. He. He had my life in turmoil. My marriage broke down. I did not want to know my other two children because I was so focused on Michael because of his lies. 
they call Saddam the monster. I love this man, Tony Blair's the monster. He has devastated, he has killed so many people. The report proves there were no lies, Tony Blair said today, no dishonesty. But while he faces condemnation and criticism, Janice Proctor hoped for something more than strong words. To be criticised for 179 lives, I think that's a little bit polite. For Elsie, seven years of waiting and 2.6 million words can't sum up what she's lost. Tell me what you miss about Sharon. Just everything. She's my baby, my daughter, my friend. Before she was a soldier. It's a big miss. I just loved her so much. <laughs>